Now, Guy was an incredible group. June 1988, the debut album, self-titled Guy comes out. Yes. It hit the world like, like a sledgehammer. Ushered in that new sound, that whole new Jack Swing era. Y'all released five singles off the album. And your brother makes a statement somewhere in that, that we were the biggest group in the world and we were flat broke. Is that accurate? I'll say this. I think, I think when he says, and we were flat broke, again, it's, it's, it's saying what I just said, right? If things were right, we should have had, me, Aaron and Teddy, in 89, easy worth 30 million, 40 million each. Easy. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And we talking about before IG, of course, and all this other different uh, uh, platforms. So flat boat to an artist is different than a regular individual. Okay, right? and that's why I'm asking, should we look at that as a literal statement or, okay, you are a millionaire, you're just not sitting on 30 million? I don't think we, I, I won't say he was a millionaire. When you no. say we, are you talking about all three members or you? I'm talking about me, damn sure me and my brother. You, you're telling me as big as that first album was. No, we were not millionaires, bro. We, we did not see a million dollars at all. Me and Aaron did not see a million dollars at all. Let me, let me, How let me is say that, that even possible, even based on exactly. show money? Because you got, you got singles like I Like, Groove Baby. Me. It, yeah. it, this is a- Spend the night. Exactly. Round and round. Round and round. You got five singles that came off that album that anybody who wasn't even born in that time right. know them because they're recurrent. Right. You did not, you and your brother Aaron no. didn't touch a million dollars? No, bro. Did not touch a million dollars. In bank or on paper, did not see a million dollars. Should we have? Hell yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. But again, you're talking about, you're talking about the, the cloud of slick, mysteriousness, whatever that everybody was going through it. Everybody was going through it during that time. You understand? Because the music, think about 88, 89. Think about this. Between 88 and 90, that's when music was hot all around. New Edition, Tony Tony Tony, Make Condition, I'll Be Sure, Keith Sweat, Johnny Kemp, Heavy D and the Boys, Rex and the Fat. You going, I'm talking about when music, where we were competing with each other. You understand? It was competition time. Everybody, they had everybody so messed up mentally that it was all about, well, look at us. We, we get to travel in limousines. We travel in first class. We got a, we got a, a apartment at, at this particular area of New York. We got a, a BMW, uh, a 300Z, which is like Ferrari back then. You had a 300Z, I was like, you got a 300Z? What? Oh, that, what? That's, that's the shit, right? It was like, you had that, you had a forerunner, you had all these things that you were being given. Then you had, we had Rolexes, diamond face Rolexes before anybody was doing it. We had it. Aaron had the first Jesus piece ever. He had it. So you're thinking about not only were we a group that created a sound of music, we created style, fashion. We had all the stuff before. We created all the, the swag, the, the huge videos with the dancers. I'm talking about with 30 dancers. We was doing that. One person doing that before that time was Michael Jackson. So when you, when you think about all this, it's like Guy as a group, as a name, is much bigger than the fame. Who came up with the name Guy? Well, you hear different stories. The story that I know is there was a, a store called Le Guy, right? There was a, a, a store called Le Guy. It was a very fashionable, high-end store, dope clothes and everything. And when they saw that name, um, Gene, Gene was like, yo, that's, that's fly. And then they all agreed, Guy. So I took up the lure, Guy. Fashion, style, that's what we're going to be. We're going to be fashion, style, and everything. Dope. That's the story I know. Timmy will say there was a store in, in, in Harlem 
that was called guy or whatever. I don't know that story. So I stick to the story that I know. You understand? And I like that story better because that story shows me just how fly we were. And if you can think of a boutique, any boutique store, you always have special pieces in that store, right? And most people cannot afford those pieces in that store. You might have a jacket that's leather that comes down here that's that got snake skin and faux fur inside, and that's that jacket is $3,500. You're going, damn. But we had it, and we wore it. So everybody said, where you get that from? So everything we did, we wanted it to be where, damn, you see those jumpers they got on? You see that rayon and silk and dollar that they wearing? You see that, that those jackets with the rhinestones and the and the picture? We started that first. We had that. As far as on the mainstream of it, right? We had that. And Dapper Dan is one of the first things we wore. He, he was the first really fashion stuff that we started wearing. You know what I mean? Then after that, we started branching out. Homeboy named um, uh, uh, Brian. He he did some stuff for us. He did stuff for Michael Jackson, all that kind of stuff. And then I started getting into it and then creating stuff, like I said before. But now, nah, man, as far as the money go, man, it, it, it's, it's, it's a sad thing. But again, I don't want to feel like my story is no different than anybody else's no, story. No, I, I, I totally time, understand. But, I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm learning and even as you're speaking. So these are things that I didn't know. Um, yeah. it, okay, album comes out in 88. Top of the world. Obviously, you're not eating the way you would have liked to eat. You Absolutely. guys break up with Gene in 89, if I'm correct. 89, yes. 89, you break up with Gene. Are you still liable to him on paper? Even though you part ways with him, now you got to go out and get new management. But is yes. he still eating even though he's not doing the day-to-day -day with God? For sure. Harvey Austin came in um, and became my manager, but Harvey knew Gene. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they all was, you know, it's like one to the next to the next. You know what I mean? It was, it's almost the same, same person, same situation. But it, I, I, and I, have to, I have to emphasize this. I didn't have a life where I was complaining and crying throughout the whole time of 88 to 90. I mean, think, and I keep saying this because I want your listeners and the people to understand. The majority of my life in the business was a two-year span. Like a truly two-year span. I ain't talking about how long the music lasts, 30-something years and all this stuff, what we did. I'm talking about we had the Guy album. Yep. We had the Future record that came out in 90. After that, it was a wrap. We broke up in 90, and we didn't see each other until 1999, going into 2000, when we did the Guy 3 album. So all the love and the hype and the, and the stuff, that's what I'm saying. God was on us because our group is so big in the minds of the people that it was bigger than the things that should have been given to the members that made it that way. You understand? The brand itself, the name itself, because it was so amazing to the people, what we did in that time frame is still untouchable today. In, in that two-year time frame. Think about it, bro. How many groups you know only did two albums? 33 years plus later, people are still talking about those albums and we still headlining when we do shows. Most of the time, people are like, I don't know where they at. Where, where is Teddy? Where is Aaron? Where is Damien? What are they doing? You follow me? It's no, like I understand. I understand hundred percent, and and I think you are a hundred percent right. Uh, and you know, you put it in a very, very visual context. This is really a two-year span of being active in terms of recording. Now, when you guys went from the guy debut album to the future second album. Aaron, who was a major writer and obviously the lead sing, singer of the group, 
Didn't he say I wasn't writing or singing for half of this album? The future album? No. Well, no. Look, let me paint the picture this way. Please. There's a lot of discord in between this time. Not discord to where, I hate you, Teddy. I hate you, Aaron. Fuck you, Damien. Discord in there's people pulling Teddy this way. Aaron's feeling unappreciative this way. And I'm really like, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this is madness. Because we shouldn't, we shouldn't have no issue like this. You understand? We shouldn't be, I don't care what's going on. But again, it's a mindset. And I want to say this, and this is no disrespect to anyone. If your mindset is not on point, this goes for anything, relationship, business. Yo, if you my boy, you my boy. You ain't trying to do nothing behind my back. You ain't trying to talk to my girl. You ain't trying to take from me. You ain't trying to be no funny ass fuck boy. And excuse me, I hope I can speak this way on this. I don't know. But at the end of the day, you ain't trying to be no, no, no pussy ass cat. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a real cat when it come down to facing men face to face. If you doing something crazy. Cause I don't like people talking like, oh man, I'll do this to you. No, you ain't doing nothing to me, bro. I don't care who you are. Cause I, you know, I like, we can fight. Good luck. Now, I don't care what you do. Man, 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 this, that, another. Don't stop talking, right? So it's like, when you think about people pushing you and you young still, you're talking about in your twenties and you, guy is, guy is super duper. You know, we are the talk of the town, bro. In the time that we dropped the record to the time we broke up in 90, there was no group after, after we, quote unquote, kind of took the, re the, the realm from, from New Edition, right? No disrespect to that because New Edition had it for so many years, right? And then it was like, New Edition guy, New Edition guy, and then guy took it. But I, won't, I would never say that we take it. So when I say this, I want to say it like this. We did two different types, two different sounds of music. We came out with a whole new sound of music. New Edition didn't do that. We came out with a whole new sound of music. So you had to, the reason for that saying that we took over is that we took over all of music, right? It's like, how many people changed music? Quincy Jones with Thriller and Off the Wall with Michael Jackson. He changed the whole sound of music. You have Mich Michelle and Dega Ocello, who with her album, her debut album was amazing. If you hear the sonically sound of that album, then you have Prince who did what he did. And after that, you got Guy who changed the whole sound of music. So you cannot put us on the same page as them. That's a disrespect to us to so, say. You know, and you're absolutely right. But why did the group break up if that's the case? Like, what was it that was behind the scenes? You guys changed the sound of music. You are top of the world. And in your prime, you break up. Go. Why? As I was saying earlier, when you have people, let's think about this. I want to put you in perspective, so I hope I paint the picture correctly to everybody that's listening. In every group, you have a lead singer, right? And then you have, in every group, maybe a producer who people, you're either going to grab hold to the lead singer and say, that's Ralph Tresvant, that's Michael Jackson, that's uh, El Debage, right? You're gonna, you're gonna take it there, that's Ollie Woodson, God bless his soul. And you're gonna say, okay, I'm the lead singer, let me take the helm, because I could. But Aaron wasn't a business cat. So the second person that they took, well, Aaron ain't really paying attention to business on that, on that aspect. Teddy and Gene was already in charge, so they pushed Teddy up, up to the top. And it was everything started being Teddy Riley featuring Guy. Teddy Riley featuring Guy on the remixes, on Teddy's Jam remixes, on, on the Her remix. It started being all this. So you started seeing people putting up one of the members above the rest. You understand? Instead of saying, it's okay if you said, Teddy Riley featuring Guy because he was doing a remix and da da da. But then you can't say Teddy Riley featuring Guy. And I always said this in every interview that's stupid because Teddy was in Guy. 
So you can't feature him if he's in the group. Why would you feature him? Now you're really trying to say it's Teddy Riley and Guy. When who's Guy? Me and Aaron? That don't make any sense, right? If, you, if you're using common sense. But the, the industry is made up to rip the fabric of greatness apart from each other. They don't care nothing about the artist. Let me make this very clear. Industry don't care nothing about artists. The artist is, is a effect of the engine running. It's like, okay, what's the mainstay of, of, any, of any record? The publishing. Who owns the publishing? Who owns the masters? Imagine if an artist knew, I'm going to sing on this, I'm going to own my own masters, I, or else I'm not, I'm not signing off on this. You'll never be able to put the album out, bro. A, I want 50% of the master, and I want 100% of my publisher. Well, we can release you. Don't. I release it myself because it's that hot. What if, what if an a, a artist in 89, 88 thought like that? Say, you know what, dog? I'm so, I'm so dope. I'm just going to release it myself on a platform that I think I can create. You go, what? You going to do what? You going to release a record yourself, man. You need to be signed to Sony, Jive, Avista, this, MCA at the time. No, I don't need them. My, this joint is, is different. Imagine a person that did that. Instead of you saying, wow, uh, Master P came out with no limit and was pushing out from his trunk, cash money from the trunk. You have so so deaf. And then they go and they sell hundreds of thousands to a million records on the street level, like they like they like they sling it. And then you go to priority and and these people, and they, get, and they go, whoa, okay, well, l l listen, man, we we'll do a joint venture with you, bro. We'll give you $40 million. Of course, you, you, you get my point? 